What's up everybody? I'm now sitting in the ET5 in its parking garage here in Italy. As you can see outside, beautiful views and we are slow charging, actually super, super slow. It's taken more than 24 hours to get a full charge here. And the reason is that this is simply a very plain and normal charger that we are here, um, you know, just a, a regular plug that we're using for charging and I want to tell you a little bit more about my experience of driving down from Germany to Italy and this charging situation and also how people react here in Italy um, to the car. So first of all, I haven't touched a supercharger so far and we drove hundreds of kilometers from Munich down here um, to the northern part of Italy and um, that means usually you would start supercharging along the way because well, the range here is more than 500 kilometers in this car and technically that should get you there. However, possibly on an empty battery um, by the time that you arrive. And also it's a quite hilly uh, way. There's lots of traffic jams in, in between. Long story short, the realistic range is below that and you would possibly need to charge up in between. And what I want to point out here is um, the charging situation and, uh, you know, what NEO strives to offer in terms of battery swapping and um, getting rid of range anxiety of users. Because, you know, if you think critically around it, uh, one could say that battery swapping doesn't really solve it or is not even necessary. And in fact, even supercharging might not be necessary because I am just proof of that. I just went down here and we'd never even stopped at a supercharger. The fastest pace that we've been charging here was, I think, 11 um, kilowatt. Um, that's really slow, actually. Um, has a little bit to do with the bad infrastructure here in Italy. I have to acknowledge that because um, those chargers were actually um, described to have a higher speed of charging, but that was all of that we get as a speed. But um, it all comes down to planning, in my point of view. I think when you start using an electric car uh, you need to kind of change your behavior a little bit you want to start integrating the charging in your daily use of the car and i'm making the point here that this is completely possible even with slow charging um, for it depending a little bit on, on the use case of course but you know for us it was no issue at all to um, stop the car sometimes when we are at the restaurant um, and along the way here without any range anxiety issues at all and charge up just a little bit at very slow speeds and still having enough of range left to arrive at our destination because the fact is at some points you need to use the toilet you need to eat something you need to or you want to have a coffee or you know treat yourself a little bit you don't want to drive for six hours straight right and that's when you can easily um, pick up a little bit of juice here um, for the car and it keeps you getting going even if it's not the fastest charging speed. And so that begs the question whether or not NEO's battery swapping network is actually unnecessary. And in a way it is. On the other hand, I have to say we are now in a 100 kilowatt hour battery. So that's the big pack. And this is having more than 500 kilometers of range. So this is not the average EV, right? It's a premium to luxury vehicle uh, with lots of performance and power. And most of the smaller EVs possibly have a much lower range as well. But I want to uh, speak about one example. When I was parking at a supermarket here uh, in Italy, um, of course, you get in touch with the other EV owners uh, right next to you. And there was a couple from the US, actually from New York, and they immediately were talking to us when they saw our car, of course, you know, nice design and a good looking car and so on. They uh, want to touch base and uh, exchange views. And well, basically, the funny story here is that they were on a rental, a Fiat 500 um, pure electric vehicle. Actually, I've never heard that before that you get a pure electric vehicle in Italy as a rental. It's quite uncommon, to be honest. But those guys from the US, which are obviously not very familiar with the charging infrastructure here in Europe as well, they were sitting at a supermarket and literally sitting inside the car and waiting for it to finish. So that must have be a smaller battery and that must be also very slowly charging, maybe at 10 kilowatt. And so you can imagine um, that would take possibly 
four to seven hours to fill up, right? So this is a nightmare. And they were literally sitting in the car and waiting until it's finished. And there's no way for them to top up that way and, you know, keep on going. So this is where actually range anxiety kicks in, where um, EVs are not um, competing with the traditional gasoline cars in a way. But I would argue that they possibly have not planned accordingly uh, or you know have just a different use case uh, but for me it never happened the situation that I was sitting in this car and waiting it for for it to charge except for maybe now where I'm sitting in the car and shooting this video and having this very very slow charge but the reason I'm doing that is because of course um, I don't need a car right now and this can charge as long as it wants until I need it again and then it's possibly up to 80% or something. So it's coming down to the mindset of the user. If you are able to plan your day and your charging um, accordingly, I think even with the slowest type of charging, it's really possible to fit for most of the needs. Uh, for example, if I'm now going down down the road to, to the supermarket, I would find a supermarket with a, a charger again and in this 30 minutes to 60 minutes, it would give me another um, juice up of the battery. And personally, I'm really enjoying this experience, to be honest. Uh, for me, it's working really, really well, uh, but I can see how people that are not willing to change their minds around that actually have issues and would possibly not buy an EV because of that. And so this is again where I think battery swapping comes in because this can be a selling point where people say, right, you know, I don't have to care about charging. I just go there, swap for three to five minutes, just as I'm um, used to with the refueling experience. But as you hear between the lines, I think it's actually not even necessary uh, in case you are willing to adapt and able to plan a little bit more. And I think this is where NEO has also a missed opportunity right now, because frankly, the software, um, the center screen is not very good when it comes to finding charging spots here in Italy or anywhere, uh, actually. It's just going to list them by distance to where you are currently, but not according to your needs. So actually, if there would be a better recommendation engine when it comes to charging speeds and also use cases, I think that could dramatically improve the experiences of users while charging and also um, yeah, kind of make battery swapping a little bit more obsolete. And this is why I don't buy the arguments of the fudsters when it comes to EV who are spreading fear, uncertainty and doubt about the EV adoption or saying like, you know, what if everybody wants to charge and, you know, it's not possible for everyone to use an electric car. No, it's entirely possible. However, I think there needs to be more education and support, let's say on the software side uh, for trip planning and for ways of integrating uh, charging and EVs into the whole life cycle in the in the normal way and your use cases that you have daily. Now coming back to battery swapping and I know it sounded a little bit like I was arguing against battery swapping which is totally not the case because I'm just talking about battery swapping as a means to replenish power and charging up and I was giving you a little bit more of a perspective here that how I'm actually enjoying this charging slow charging experience here and also on the supercharging side so far I had never an issue uh, when it comes to how fast this is working. There are actually also important news coming up from NEO's side regarding the supercharging speed, but more on that on another video. Very exciting, by the way. But I would just argue that NEO is the company with possibly the largest range of solutions here. You know, from battery swapping, slow charging, fast charging, and so on, and owning the infrastructure, there is no other company like NEO that is actually offering and making this user experience so great. On the other hand, NEO could differentiate a little bit more if they were better at software and trip planning, and if they would innovate a little bit further when it comes to the app and the internal central screen uh, for the planning of the charging solutions. That's my resume here, because other than that, NEO is offering every use case something that is very satisfying and should be working great. So even if you are one that is driving very, very fast at the autobahn and you're going a lot between cities, that's where battery swapping comes in handy. Or maybe for people who don't have their home charger or just have to park at the street, 
then of course battery swapping is a great solution again right and let's always not forget about all of the benefits like upgradability and battery health and that and sort of but you know i'm just talking here about the charging experience and the solutions in place and here is where i say people shouldn't be afraid right now and that guy that i spoke to from the us clearly was struggling with his experience there and i would say that this is mainly due to the fact that this um, legacy automaker um, fiat there um, doesn't provide its own infrastructure they don't give a nice interface also for trip planning and the user itself also is inexperienced with evs and should actually start to integrate it more into its daily activities then i think it would be even with that smaller car smaller battery and slower charging speed um, be possible to largely use it as a normal car without having to complain and without having to sit at a slow charger at a supermarket for hours and waiting it to fill up that's not how it should be that's unfortunately why still today lots of people are unfortunately speaking out against ev where i think they shouldn't and that's why i think neo could be one of the leaders with the ultimate solution here when it comes of the breadth of offerings and the type of satisfaction that i bring but a little bit more work to do on the software side in my point of view thanks for watching and see you in my next videos